In today's video, we are going to knit the collar. According to my pattern, I need 42 left and 42 right for this collar. That seems a bit excessive to me. So I'm going to take a few minutes to do some calculations and we'll come back. All right. I even counted this one and it is actually 84 stitches. So no, my calculations are not off. We will be doing 42 stitches, but we're not going to um, knit it in two by two. We're going to knit it in one by one. So we're going to set up for one by one ribbing. off the connecting arm. Huh. Sinker plate. Attach the connecting arm. I'm putting my tension on zero and zero. And I am going to back up this camera so you can actually see everything I'm doing. So I have moved this as far back as I can. Now I'm moving up the alternate stitches. I'm going to make sure that the stitches stay inside the, uh, the, the main bed stitches. And I have to pause because I forgot to load my white and my red yarn. So I'm going to pause, load both yarns into my tension mast so that we don't have to stop. All right, so the white and the red yarn are both medium weight instead of being um bulky so we don't need to use tension six we will use tension four maybe even as low as tension three we'll see how i feel about it after the first two rows I am loading the white yarn first. I have 31 rows of knitting to do. So I'm going to do this really, really simple. I'm doing 10 rows of white, 10 rows of red, 10 rows of white, and then we will ease the collar onto it. So let's get going on that one. Loading up the white first. We will be using the pressers after we do the cast on. And of course the white will be used for the cast on. Double checking all of our settings. Everything is reasonable. Except for, yet again, I left all of my stitches up. So now I have to move all of my river stitches back down to where they should be. And I will manually um, knit the ones that are left separated. My 
My bad. All right. Just gonna loosen this a little bit. I will come back when I've done that. Okay, so the process really wasn't that hard. It's just a matter of very carefully moving the yarn out of the way of this, the needle latch and moving it down. No harm, no foul. But now we need to put on the cast on coat. And I don't think my short one's going to uh, fit the bill. So we will pause again and I will find my bulky cast on coat. Okay, I found my wee beastie. And uh, let's get this on there. Okay, now we need to weigh this piece down. I suggest one giant barrel weight in the center. One at 40 on the left. And one at 40 on the right. Then you take two small barrel weights. Put one at around 20 and the other one at 20 left so 20 right 20 left taking a deep breath up your tension to two and two you want to knit on the main bed going to the going to the right but not on the river going to the right hope that makes sense we are Keeping our row counter at zero, hoping for the best outcome. There's one. Okay. Now, place your carriage in part on the main bed, and you are knitting across on the river only. have a yarn barf. Sorry. We'll have to pause. Okay, we're back at it. We are now knitting on the main bed. Everything looks pretty good. Now we get to put in our pressers. And let's up our tension to three. Make sure that you have your ribber knitting both directions. So N and N. Your main bed is in N and N. Plain knitting. Tension three both beds. When we get to the left hand side, I'm going to have a little bit of an issue, but hopefully it'll work itself out. Reset our row counter again. This is the actual first row of white, and we're going to knit 10 rows. Okay, that was not as bad as it appeared. So, 10 rows. Make sure that you clear your work so that your presser can actually change direction. Now it appears that my left side is not knitting off as well as it should. I am going to add an extra little bit of weight here. Just because it's being naughty. And that should help. Okay, that's row 10. Now we're going to switch colors. We're actually going to cut the yarn. About there. 
Now, instead of dealing with yarn ends on this, I'm actually just going to tie the yarns together. So I'm going to do a Russian join and we'll be back. All right. So now we're on row 11. We will now knit to row 20. Gives us another Russian joy. All right. The last 10 rows. Now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer all of the stitches from the river onto the main bed. Yes, it's a long process, but at least this is the uh, widest piece that we have to deal with going forward. So we'll come back when I have these all transferred. So why did we do ribbing for the collar? And why did we do it in one by one? We did it in one by one so that it would not matter which is the good side, which is the bad side. They're all the right side. I know that makes absolutely no sense at this point, but it will as we get going. I'm almost at the end of this one. I'm going to drop the river and then I'm going to ease that entire um, collar line onto these 84 stitches. Well, it's not 84, it's 83. Because we have 42 on the right and only 41 on the left. All right, we are releasing the ribbon, dropping. Now, we are removing our strippers. Gee, that sounds bad. Oh, well, they're not strippers, they're pressers, haha. <laughs> and we are taking off the connecting arm and we're going to put back on the sinker plate. And the only reason why we're doing that is because I'm not quite sure what we're doing next. But I do like to have my yarn held off to one side so it's not interfering in what I'm doing. So I'm going to switch um, directions on the camera and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So now we are going to ease 
the belly band and the um, collar onto the work. This is my um, latch tool roll where I connected the belly band to the piece. So this is now the pearl side. So I'm going to hang the belly band starting on the left hand side, going all the way to the right hand side, easing this entire piece over these 84 stitches. I'm going to make certain that I do not skip any of the stitches that are live and on the um, waist yarn. Again, this is a long process, but the end result is worth it. So I'm going to work on this side of the bed, way over here. Slowly putting every single one of those stitches on these first needles on the left. Now I have a decision to make if I want to do this back stitch or if I want to um, latch tool. I think that I need this to be um, sturdy instead of springy. So I'm probably just going to latch tool it using the same method I did before with the exaggerated loops. And that way, it has a little bit of um, stability and will stay on the dog better. Way better than just a solid tube does. Another thing to remember is that when you have a yarn tail, move it up because you will be weaving those in as you go. Now this flipped over on me. You want to make sure that you don't accidentally twist it the wrong way and nor do you want your um, body piece to catch itself on your um, barrel weights. Here I have the first stitch or last stitch on the body piece. Here's the center one. You can see where we started that second half. All of these yarn tails are trying to interfere. Move them out of your way. You want to pick up that center. Here's your center stitch. I think this is around center, but let's do some accounting for that. Okay, so we have 42 to 27. So 27 plus 42 is 60 what? Calculator. 
42 plus 25, 26, 27. Sixty-nine right, divided by two equals thirty-five. So we need thirty-five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh. La. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Wow, what a guess. That is center. Wow. All right, so let's carry on, shall we? I need to make sure that I'm grabbing the outside stitch and not an inside stitch. So make sure that you handle. Ooh. Is that an outside or is that an inside? Hang on. Nope. That is definitely an outside stitch. If you are finding that your um, work is bunching upward, pull it down. You can even put a little bit of weight on it if you want to. Even a claw weight will help. I think you get the idea as to what I'm doing. I'm just going to ease it totally across. And you can't even see what I'm doing. Again. Okay, so I counted from 42 right down 35, 34 stitches. And I happened to have just put my um, center mark actually on what was 35 stitches. I am now easing these onto the machine and I will come back when that is completed. All right, that was an adventure, wasn't it? So now we're going to move everybody forward. I have a, a yarn tail here. And two yarn tails here. These two yarn tails are going to switch sides and I'm going to very carefully weave this yarn tail into a few stitches on this side and goes down between the beds. This yarn tail will now go under and over on this side. Just a few stitches and go down between the beds. This yarn tail needs to go this way. So we're going to go around stitch number four and we're going to go over the center stitch and under, over and under, over and under one more time. Now we're going to come back opposite. Make sure that we cross that center stitch that goes down between the beds. We now need to grab our clips 
and we need to clip each of those yarn tails. All right. I have the choice of using white or using gray. I'm going to use white. Tension 10. Knitting across after I put some weight on this. Thing. Nope, we have the weight still on the um, on the collar, so we're fine for that one. <sighs> nice and relaxed, knitting across. Now, I'm going to back stitch this. So to back stitch this, no, I'm not back stitching. I'm latch tooling because I said I wanted some stability. So now that this is tension 10, I'm now going to manually stitch again. So I'm going to bring these all out. So I'm doing two layers of stitching. One second, please. So we are going to hand manipulate and stitch just like we did before. And then I'm going to latch tool. Because I don't need it to stretch. I just need it to go over the dog's head and stay there. If I backstitch, then it will just slide off the dog, no problem. This way, it'll stay on that dog. As soon as I get this latch tooled off, we will need to sew No, we will not sew. We will actually go right into the um, first sleeve and then we will sew the other side and do the second sleeve. My bad. You can't even see what I'm doing. All right, that one's done. We can now trim the yarn tail uh, about there. Okay, now we're going to latch tool and then we'll come back. So latch tool and I'm just going to latch tool this all the way off. Okay, so this is what we have. I'm going to just lay this down on the pegs here. Of course, everything catches on the gate pegs and on the needles when you need it to do it the least, of course. Give it a little pull. Okay, laying it nicely. So this doesn't look like much, but when it stretches out, it actually is. This is our neck. You can see it's nice and deep, belly, and shoulders. We are now going to 
hang this stitch, the yarn mark, on zero. And we will be doing the sleeve, which goes from this waist yarn. Actually, no. Actually, yes. From this um, yarn mark to this yarn mark, and this yarn mark to this yarn mark. And it is a short sleeve, so we're talking only a few inches. And then we will be working with the red and the white again to do some one by one ribbing. And then we will cast off using a simple latch tool. Oh, no, the sleeve has to be springy. We will cast off using um, back stitch. So the ribbing on the sleeves will not match this finish, but it will match the finish that we will do on the um, rest of the piece. Clear as mud. Sounds good to me too. See you in the next video. In the next video, we will knit sleeve number one.